I, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use Integrated Architecture Builder to configure a Rockwall automation system. My name is Todd McKinnon with Werner Electric Supply. First thing you'll do is you'll open up your Ar Integrated Architecture Builder, um, create a new workspace, put what put it in whatever location you care to put it in and this is what you'll get you'll get this workspace right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this wizard view in this lower left area I'm going to make a compact logics select my voltage put in how many inputs I'm going to be using, how many outputs I'm going to be using. If I'm going to be putting any analogs. And then you're going to get to this screen. I can then decide which processor I'm going to use. I'm going to use the L30 ERM because the M I might be doing some motion control. Um, and then as far as the inputs that it selects on its own, it selects high density modules because they're less expensive. Um, I prefer to use the 16 point module, so I'll change those. I will make the default processor called this. And now at that point, my compact logic is already configured. Next thing that it's going to ask me is if do I want to make uh, add some distributed I.O. In this case I'm going to say yes. I will use an existing network which is what I was using for the compact logics. If you don't select that it's going to create multiple Ethernet switches. Um, and I want to just use point I.O. so deselect all the other ones. Again I'm just going to put in how many inputs and outputs I'm going to be using and for point IO this is very convenient um, because it'll add all of the necessary power expansion modules that you might need if you're using a lot of IO and when you get to this screen right here set the bank size to a large number I'm just going to say 30 because then it'll make it all on one consecutive bank I want IB8s, OB8s, that's the analog, so I can pick an AENTR if I want, if I want to have dual ports, and then just say finish. So at this point, that's all I wanted to add for now. Now go to your hardware tab, and it should show the control logics that you configured initially and it should also show all of your point I.O. If you look at the point I.O., this is where it, I think it's very convenient um, the way it configures things. All of those I.O. modules got selected and notice in here it added that additional power module that I need so I didn't have to do any calculating. Next, uh, go over to the network tab right here and we'll look at the switch that we had selected for us. It automatically selected a switch for us. In here you can notice um, it put in the processor to the switch, it added the point I.O. to the switch, and it gave it a couple different IP addresses. You can go in here and change the properties um, of that switch to be what you're going to actually be using. Same thing with the point I.O. adapter module. And as far as the switch goes, you can also go in there and look at the switch properties. and decide whether you want that particular switch or not. Um, you just do the pull down and to select whichever switch you want. This one has six ports, you might need more ports. 
and uh, that's about it. Now let's also go ahead and check out our system. So you can hit this little project um, checker and it will go and make sure that everything was configured correctly. The next thing that maybe I'll do is I can um, go into a, a few different locations if I want and add things like drives. If I want to go in and uh, add software to my bill of materials, I can go into this and predict pick which type of software I might want to select. Maybe somebody's going to be using um, RSU Factory Talk View SE. I can just put a number in there and that will add that to the bill of materials. And then when you're done, you can just select the project bill of materials generator and it'll show you a little bill of materials of everything that you've got to this point. And um, that's about it. One other thing, you can save it to an Excel file if you'd like. Also, if you want to generate a really big document and you have Word on your computer, you can um, create a, a Word document for that as well. When Word's done, configuring everything. Um, this is the document you get. You get a bunch of fluff stuff that you probably don't care about. Just delete that. But it does give you a nice architectural view of what you've set up. A nice bill of materials for everything. And might be something nice that you want to put into a proposal or into a customer presentation. That type of thing. So anyway, I think that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.